Tracks play an important role in a racing game. Creating one yourself can be challenging. They need to be fun to play, feel distinct from each other and offer a challenge to the player. But there are a lot of ways to make it easier. It was finally timed for me to create my own courses. And in this video I'm sharing with you how they were made and the design thoughts behind them. Welcome to Believe in Game Dev, my name is Philip and in this series we are making our own card game in Unity. If you are new here or interested in game development in general, you should subscribe to the channel. In our previous devlogs we used Mario Kart assets from the web. This was fantastic as it made the start a lot easier, but it also creates a problem. As the Mario Kart franchise is owned by Nintendo, I won't be able to upload the game with the assets in place. So the next step for me was to find and make some assets I could use. Once again I went on the internet to find the fitting models and luckily there are a lot of free models online. Just take a look at this 3D racing kit, it looks perfect. Except not really. The props are great, but when it comes to the tracks, they are only modular. This really narrows down a possibility space. There are only 90 degree turns and the incline and decline for the road is fixed. That meant I needed to find another solution for the problem. A solution that would allow me to create whatever road I would like to have. That got me thinking. Remember the splines we talked about in the last episode? For a quick refresher, splines allow us to set points and with some algebra it calculates a smooth line between them. These are super helpful now as well. If we take a closer look at the path, we'll notice that it consists of many vertices. As you know 3D objects are made up of triangles. We now can use the vertices to create triangles for a 3D mesh. And just like this we have a first row that we can change dynamically. To get some more control we can change the width, the height and the offset of the road. With that setup I created the first little track. It doesn't look like a lot, but if we put on the right material we have our first rainbow road. Sweet, that makes our first track. For the next track I wanted to add some 3D models into the scene. So we'll make use of the previously mentioned 3D kit. Now we could go for a very basic approach. Make a circle and build a stadium around it and then call it a day. But that wouldn't make the track any more exciting. That meant I needed to think about what makes a track actually fun to play. As a good point of reference, we can look at Mario Kart once again. The stage layouts often follow a pretty similar approach. The stage itself has an overarching theme. This could be racing, castle or cheese. The tracks then are broken down into multiple sub-themes. A good example for this is the track Toad's Factory from Mario Kart Wii. As the name suggests, the main theme is that of a factory. Starting the race we get greeted by multiple hydraulic presses. In a more open section we then dodge moving crates before entering a narrow line which leads us to the track's final in between dirt and bulldozers. Every part of the track feels different through aesthetics, sound and gameplay. For our racing track I decided to take some parts from the Luigi circuit that we had previously in place. I really liked the curve with the stadium and the tilted track as well as the ramp and the sand. In addition I had the idea for a long straight with some pits on the side. For the fourth section I looked into the assets for what I could work with. It wasn't that much but I thought about using these tents to create a small camp with a shortcut. As a first step I laid out the track itself and then started with the straight and the pits by putting multiple building blocks together. Once I had these in place I moved on to the tents and the shortcut. To get the right dimensions I placed walls that later turned into fences. On top of that I improved the whole track with floor tiles and finished up with some more details. Small things like trees, radio stations, billboards and more. I'm quite happy how it turned out. While building the track I noticed that I spent a lot of time placing objects in parallel to the track. I thought this process can be easily optimized. Therefore I coded in a new functionality for the spline system. It now allows us to place prefabs onto the track. As you can see here this makes the creation a lot faster. 
Another thing I wanted to improve on was that the racing track was mostly flat. To counter this I made use of Unity's Polybrush feature, which easily enables you to change an existing 3D mesh. In combination with a low poly shader, it made up for a quite decent look. The Kenny art assets used for the first track have many more sets. One of them is castle themed. This one I used for the biggest track yet. By the way, if you have any suggestions for an interesting track, you can leave them in the comment section. Anyways, I applied what I learned from the previous course. I first laid out the track and adjusted it until it was fun to drive around it. This step is really important, because if it's not fun in this stage, it won't be fun in the final one either. With some ideas in my head, I made a rough castle, giving me points of reference. To fill out the map, I came up with four sections for the track. In the beginning you enter the castle over a bridge and make your way through tight corridors, as well as a big hall. I liked the idea to drive on top of the castle walls. So the next section was themed around this idea. The asset bundle included some hedges, which I used for a garden segment. It has a nice looking fountain and to spice things up it also comes with a secret path. Once you leave the castle, you drive along a wide mountain range, giving you a final chance to pass your enemies before you cross the finish line. To wrap it up I gave it a more polished look with more details across the map. A statue was put in the garden, flags and stairs added a lot to the castle looks and some more variation in the castle's interior made it come alive. This is how it finally looks. Now that we have some tracks to drive upon, it's time to add multiplayer to the game. So join me next time when I implement this into the game. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and ring the bell. See you in the next video and take care.